doing so far. Well, so I know how to start, put the needle down. I've only been using the one speed here. Uh -huh. um, so I haven't worked with different speeds at all. Okay. Um, and I've just, uh, I've done a lot of meandering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have a couple rulers. The extra um, one, the Versa tool that you recommend. Uh -huh. I love that. Don't you love that one? Yes. Yeah. So I've been doing scallops and some different curvy lines. Okay. All right. So are you comfortable with threading? Um, I usually go back through the steps that I have. I can, I can get the machine threaded. Okay. I'm struggling with tension. Okay. Right. Tension is all in the bobbin. Once you get your bobbin tension set, then, it, then it, um, the, all the adjustments will be made on this, this knob here. Mm -hmm. So let's check your bob, the bobbin stitching on this. Okay. You want to make sure it goes under that mm -hmm. and into that, and make sure that it's turning clockwise. Okay. This. It should stand up in your hand, but not come out. Okay. So this is a good tension on this one. So if we start stitching and the tension is bad, then, it ha then it's all in the adjustment up here on the top. Okay. There is a tool that you can add to this that's called Easy Set Tension, yeah. and it I has numbers. Yes, I do, do have that. You have that. Okay, mm -hmm. so that helps you when you're changing different weights and different colors because all of that factors into your tension. Okay. And you know the little drop of oil there in between mm -hmm. bobbin changes and that sort of thing? Yeah. So, to start with, let's get to a uh, regulated. This machine has um, Two modes, manual, regulated. In manual, the stitches that you make are all done by how fast or slow you move the machine. In regulated, you have two different choices, cruise or precision. Cruise stitches all the time, precision stitches when you move the needle. Okay. So um, this is your stitches per inch. So so if you're in a regulated, it should do it should do 12 stitches per inch. When you're in manual, it's going to depend on how fast or slow you move. Okay. The machine makes a total different sound when it's in manual. And um, some of the educators like manual for different things. Um, and then obviously cruise or precision for other things. Okay. okay, this is your needle up, needle down, so you know all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, let's get to whatever your questions are. Okay, so. It sounds like then the regulated is going to be, especially as a beginner, that what I want to yes. do the most yeah. work with. I think most people, even on domestic sewing machines, the thought of having a regulated stitch is very enticing because then they know that the stitches are going to be the same length all the time, no matter what. Yeah. So yeah, regulated is, in, is important on one of these because you, you never know how fast you're going to get going. Um, you know, so it's, it's very helpful. So, so then, so I, I choose the regulator, which is on, uh -huh. and then I would put my needle down, mm -hmm. and then I want to pull it, or put it back up and then pull away to yes. pull this. Kind of a good idea to grab a hold of your, ne your thread when you do that. Okay. Do your needle down and then needle up move it so that you're pulling up your bobbin. Mm -hmm. okay. And then if you just do a couple of stitches in the same spot, I'm doing the wrong thing, I need this. Now basically your thread is locked, okay. so you're not going to come unraveled. And always get your thread out of the way. So you don't want it to get caught up in your um, hopping foot there. So now you're ready to move. Whatever is highlighted in green is what's going on. Right now this is um, dotted, so that means it's in cruise. It's going to stitch when you move the machine. Okay. And 
and when the arrows are going around and around and around, and it's ditching constantly. Oh, okay. So I probably want to be more in the cruise. I kind of like the cruise, but a lot of people pref prefer the other. Um, if you want to do points when you're in the... Um, I'm sorry, I prefer precision. Oh. Cruise is what most of the educators choose because it will give you an extra point, an extra couple of stitches if you're trying to do a point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what those two are. And then, of course, like I said, these are your stitches per inch. Okay. Um, what else? Let's see. So then I'm going to be working with just the start, and I don't need to work with the speed because that's just based on how fast I'm right. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I kept thinking, well, I'm not using this. Should I be uh, working with the speed button? But I'm good right now. I do not um, Let me... I have to think. If that... I don't... This is a little different than my machine, so mm -hmm. I have to think of, think of through. So let's look at the manual here. And of course, Mandel has lots of YouTube references. Oh, good. Okay, so on regulated cruise. Okay, I'm sorry. In manual mode, you can adjust these speeds. So if you want to slow it down, that's when those are activated. Okay. Not, they don't really do anything in the um, right. regulated mode. Okay. Okay. That's what I thought, but I wanted to make oh, sure. Good. Good, good to know. Okay. So let's go back to regulated. Okay. Now okay. what? Let's see. So then I position. Um, let me think what else. Um, Actually, when I first put the fabric on, so do I want to stitch along the top to secure all three layers? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what some of the um, YouTube videos from Handy Quilter does is they'll do a basting line mm -hmm. on the back and then they'll bring the batting and the top up to that basting line to make sure it's straight. What I like to do is take it as far back as I can. Now, you don't have this frame, do you? No. You have a big frame. Okay. Take it back as far as I can and then go against, uh, okay. go against the frame to make sure I have a straight line. Oh, and then when I bring my batting and my back and my top up to that, I know that it's straight. Um, and then to do um, basting, all you have to do is Oops, let me make sure it's off. This is your stitches per inch, so it's going to go down. Oh, evidently it doesn't go down. This is four stitches per inch. It won't go to a basting mode. Every machine's a little bit different. So mm -hmm. this one is this one is their basic. Okay. So now it's going to give you four stitches per inch, which is still a good basting. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah. Basting stitch for you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would always baste. Okay. Down the sides and across the top. Okay. So mm -hmm. what else? Um, that. Um, so if I wanted to do, um, like, so I, say I'm doing a board, uh huh, and it's a continuous pattern. How do I handle it in the fact that, I mean, the rest of my quilt's going to be down here, mm -hmm. and I could start here and go up and over, but then I get to this point. Well, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can just do that amount, move it, line it up, or you can turn it and do on the, on the um, computerized one. It's called chunking, where you do this, and then you do the next, and then you do the next. Some people find that a little difficult. It's easier to do the side at the top and the bottom, turn it and do the sides. Oh, okay. So that's just kind of a, a matter of what you find works best for you. Mm -hmm. I, for me, it's better if I turn it and do the sides. I have a hard time going down and 
lining it up and making mm -hmm. sure, especially when you get very far along and you can't see what you just did. Yeah. Okay, that helps then. Okay. Well, can I try and just put in these? Absolutely. Two? Let me see, what are we on? Let's go back up to a regular digital edge. I try to always make sure the needle is up before I go moving it. I don't want to accidentally make a hole. I mean, this is just scrap fabric, but I don't want to make a hole in whatever I'm sewing on. <laughs> Just start from scratch okay. here. Scott, maybe, uh, can I borrow your scissors? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we should get that oh, bottom yeah. thread cut too so that you start good. So let's raise okay. this up here. And on the bottom thread, the one that's got the resistance is the one you want to cut. Okay. Okay, girl. That way. There we go. Okay. I know we did. Jennifer, I have a breast cancer one. Awesome. Yeah, let me and get that. Let's see. Do I cut at this point or do my... I do. I do a couple yeah. stitches up and down. Okay. And do you just do... Needles? I usually do that, that okay. one up and down, and then kind of move it just a smidge so that it will kind of be in the same spot. Okay. And that's when I cut. Okay. Little pile there. Okay. So now, let's see. And what do I do with? Do I want to go back? Yeah, I would start where you where you were. Okay. They're looking for specific things. Let's see. So I'm on regulated. I'm on cruise. And so then. I'll this is precision. Oh, precision. This is cruise. Cruise is continual. Precision oh. is dotted so that it moves when you move. That's okay, how that's I remember it. Okay, precision. Okay. That is what I want. Okay, okay. so I'll just okay. start. Yes. Yes. Precision a little bit harder. Oh. pretty good. Your stippling, when I first did stippling, I did more of this, mm -hmm. straight and, and got um, points instead of curves. Yeah, I'm still so, working on that. So that looks pretty good. Let's do this. Um, let's tie this off. Since this isn't a quilt, I don't. We're not. I don't care. We're not going to backtrack to lock the stitch. Okay, so that's typically what you would do is just backtrack a little bit. Yeah, just kind of make a, that way. That way, that stitch is locked. Okay. And what I want to do is pull these off, which this is not what your machine would do. But I want to check and see what our our look looks like. This was this. There was something on there that I picked off, so that's why it looks so bad. But I think that looks like a pretty good tension. Looks like there's a few spots here where it's a little bit off. 
Here it looks good, but there it doesn't. So I would do a little bit of an adjustment on my top tension. Oh, okay. Because once the bottom is set, that all has to do with the top. Okay. So if it's loose on the bottom, that means the top tension is not tight enough to pull it down, I think. I always have to play a little bit. To get it? Okay, so this is the knob. And I pay attention to this little little spot there on the knob. See that little mm -hmm. black dot? That's a reference point for me. And I generally I start with the whole turn to check it to see um, what it does once once I've turned it a whole turn. This isn't like your sewing machine where you want to barely turn it. These these machines you have to turn it a whole turn. Okay. So I'm going to move it over here a little bit closer to the edge, and I'm going to turn it a whole turn. So you're turning it towards you to make it the top tighter? Yes. Okay. But I'm getting there. Always a little bit over the bottom. Right. I'm turning it right. Righty tighty. Yes. Okay. Right, but is that, wasn't that left that you were turning? I was. I turned it the wrong way. Okay. So there I'm back where I was. And now I'm now I'm a whole turn tighter. Okay. And at this point, if you have that easy set tension on there, note make note of your number once you get a good one, because like I said, different weights of fabric or thread, different colors of thread all can affect the tension. So let's just give a little. I'm feeling that one that's got a little tug on it. Mm -hmm. That way when I move it, that bottom tin the bottom thread goes down and that's what we're gonna pull up then in a minute. Okay. That looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. A little bit loose right there. So I'm gonna tighten it just maybe a half turn this time. out of the way. Now we got some curves. Still a little bit loose right there. Mm -hmm. So the eyelash effect is a loose. Uh -huh. Okay. But that's what you do without spending a lot of time on that. That's what you do and when um when I quilt, I always make sure the line is uh, back and batting in what my top is. And I put a piece of fabric that's similar or the same as what I'm quilting on the side. And I just do a couple of circles 
to test the, the uh, tension before I ever start on my quilt. Oh, okay. And I do that every time I put a new bobbin in, just in case, because the weight of the bobbin can affect it. If you start it off with a half full bobbin and then you go to a full bobbin, it can affect the, yeah, the tension because the weight of the bobbin is a little bit different. Okay. okay. So I'm going to let you come back okay. over here and see what else you might want to know. Are you pretty comfortable with the screen and is there anything else that tip it if I'm not using any other screens that I'm really missing out on? No, not not really. This is a pretty um, this is a pretty basic machine. You've got manual regulated and then regulated. You got precision and cruise. You find the one that you are the most comfortable with. Like I said, a lot of the educators use cruise because it gets those sharper points. And when you're doing rulers, it Precision moves when you move it, and with the so rulers, you're kind of moving it. You need that little bit smoother no, so movement, zipper, so cruise is probably best with thing. ruler work yeah. oh, okay. because it's not, because it when, when it's in precision, it doesn't ditch until you move it, so it's kind of almost a little bit jerky sometimes. And then I've got, the, I don't know, these things don't come with manuals anymore. You have to print them off. So any of the, what all of these different buttons mean are oh, all nice. in this manual. Okay. So um, you will be now be able to go into this and look at it and kind of on your own, play with it, figure out what does what and um, um, how to get what you want to, what you want to do. It's a basic machine. Once you get the stitches at a good uh, tension and you get a rhythm going to, in something that you're making that you like, the rest of it's pretty, pretty okay. simple. Oh, this is great. Okay, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm in good shape now. You feel better? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I'm like, okay, am I missing something really fundamental to this? Yeah. Like even just the, you know, how to start and, and end okay. is really helpful. Well, good, good. Yeah, yeah really, even, even in the, one, the machines, they just have more bells and whistles. They all do the same. The key to long arming is, practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the better you get. And um, when you're not at a machine, if you're Thank sitting you. and watching television or something, use a pen or pencil, straight up and down like a needle, and doodle. And get, anytime you do that, you're building up your muscle memory, and that helps. Um, and then when you're using a ruler, you said you've done some ruler, so you kind of have that down, you know, if you push too hard on it, it's harder to move the machine, so you gotta you gotta get just the right tension on that ruler to stay smooth and move it. Um, but I like doing ruler work, and that versatile is handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I make it the uh, circle while I'm here. Today. Okay, I was just watching the YouTube video on the circles. Uh huh. Oh, I love that. Yes, yes, yeah. They're a lot of fun, and and like I said. Practice, practice, practice. You cannot hurt the machine. Um, you know, we're here if something happens and you have questions or whatever that you need, you need a little bit more help with. We're always happy to do that. If you've got the fundamentals with loading it, threading it, and that sort of thing, then you're good. You just need to practice. Okay. Thank okay. You so much, oh, you're Stephanie. so welcome. I, I really appreciate this. That, like there we go. Just to have somebody kind of walk me through it. Even after watching the videos, it's just very mm -hmm. helpful. Okay. Yeah, the Handy Cooler is great with their videos. They have several. They do a Tuesday tip every day, and they have some things I'm called. Hip, um, I, but I'm happy with my phone. Oh shoot, I don't well, remember what they're called. But they're like minute, bit something minute, I something. I don't remember now exactly. That's true. But it's just little, little it's things that you can do, little um, patterns that you can do that are pretty simple to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. So keep an eye out for their videos. Go on there, like like their channel and then you get them on uh, in emails or on Facebook. Oh, okay. Okay? That's great. Excellent. Okay. And Thank I definitely am interested in the next ruler session. Okay. All right. Yeah, and that's coming up soon. We got um, a um, update yesterday from Handy Quilter that I haven't I had a, a chance to watch yet that talks about the new set of rulers, so, so yeah. I'm excited to get back there and listen to that um, update. We always get one every month of what's going on in, in the next month, so... 
Um, I'll be looking at that to see what's going on with them. Okay. And what is the date? You thought that was starting August or September? Oh, yeah. September. Sure. August is the last one for this month. We didn't mail them out because we didn't have anybody in the store, so we were mailing them out two at a time so people didn't have to pay too much shipping. Uh, when we closed, we shipped them three, but then once we opened, we were doing two at a time. Um, and there's a, if you go to their website and go to Rulo Club, there's a video on every single Rulo. Oh, this one. And this is the okay. six. We, we just finished session number six, so we do it for six different times, so this will be number seven. And they're just so lost, and it's hard to see what all you can make with them. Some of these rulers have on the back. Um, things that you can do. There we go. Oh, yeah. With this oval, these are the different things that you can um, potentially make once you get comfortable mastering the, the ruler. Mm -hmm. So it's really endless what you can do. Nice. Yes, with the VersaTool, I look at it. Okay, what? You know, there are some shapes here. How do I put them together to uh -huh. make something? Uh -huh. um, so yeah, that would definitely be helpful. Yeah, the VersaTool is a popular one. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of different things that you can do with with just one ruler. And the key too, of course, is not going past your hand. You want to, um, when this is on your um, on your long arm, you want to only go where your hands, where your fingers are holding it. Once you get past this finger, you want to move the ruler or move your hand over to keep that ruler stable. Otherwise, it kind of teeters on that ruler base, and you don't want that. Okay. You don't want it to jump up on top of the, of the uh, hopping foot. Okay. And do you have the circle? Uh, we have these circles. Oh, those are half circles. Uh, see, I see. <laughs> oh, but the one I was watching was... Was it called Swiss the... cheese? Uh, no, it was a long... Uh, like a rectangular shape with the circles inside. Although that one would work. I'm not sure. <coughs> That's an old one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a small switch cheese and a bigger one. Oh. What's this one here? <coughs> oh, that. Is that? That's not it either? Mm -mm. No. Um, it's maybe about this long and you know, different sizes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe one that I don't, we don't have here. But take a look and see. And don't forget, you get 20% um, off of anything. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad you came in this morning. Thank I hope you if you have any questions, just give me a call and we'll help you. But <coughs> this is go through great. that. That'll help a little bit. You, you've boosted my confidence. Good. Here, so thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Thank you, Peter. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know. They're gone. We need to wait now. Can I go back and see if there are any?